Well, hello, everybody, and happy Friday. Happy uh, Friday. It is 4 p.m. Central, which means it's time for the Back Catalog Listening Party, where we have a musical happy hour together. We invite different guests on to talk about old records, and we have a, just a good hang. So thank you for joining yeah. us today. My name is Mother Banjo, joining you from Minneapolis. I am Anthony Erig, joining you a few uh, a few blocks away from Mother <laughs> Banjo. <laughs> and uh, joining us today from Mexico, right? Uh, we have Martin Zeller. Yay! And um, and if you are out there listening, it looks like folks joining in early today. It's that kind of day. Yeah. Uh, Jim. Hi, Jim. Uh, hey, Jim. And then we got Ann and Corey and Rob and Bev, all these folks tuning in. Let us know what you are drinking. It's happy hour time for us. Yeah, and is. so I am drinking a uh, tequila and tonic. Mm -hmm. um yeah so i uh, trying to it's it's pretty chilly here today in minneapolis but it is sunny so i'm pretending that it's uh you know i'm a little more tropical uh <laughs> today and uh yeah. anthony what are you drinking well you know um we had a comment here from chris who says uh, the sun is out days are getting longer it's friday with a little crisp in the air happy hour time and in honor of chris chris is one of our our patreon members i uh i got myself some Uda pills here um, it's a Minneapolis brewer. This is Ewald the Dark. It's a dark wheat beer. Mm. And I just took my first sip, and it's absolutely delicious. It's so good. Nice. And uh, Martin, what are you uh, drinking down in Mexico today? Uh, well, uh, I'm having a Sierra uh, Sierra with some uh, orange beer <laughs> in it. And green tea. And it looks like we have a little microphone issue, but we will get that sorted out uh, for everybody. And, uh, you know, when we're piping people in from so far away, there's a lot of wires that things have to go through. So yeah. we'll get that sorted out. But um, for also want to say hi. Oh, Gatorade. I like that. Uh, greetings from Chicago. Hibbing. All right. So thank you all for joining us today. <laughs> um, if you're new to the Back Catalog listening party, uh, what happens here is uh, we listen, we revisit old records, we listen to the tunes, we talk about them with the artists and answer your questions. Uh, and today we're going to revisit the album Rooster's Crows uh, that Martin did and in 2012. Um, so uh, again, feel free to throw questions in the comments and um, before we do that, let's let's see if Mar Martin, if your mic is uh, it's working. Do you want to say a little something? Hello, hello. Is it working? It's better. It's a better. Little, a little yeah. bit better. Yeah. There's a little static, so but we'll 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 proceed. Uh, maybe for folks who aren't, I'm sure it looks like a lot of your fans are already on here. But for folks who maybe are less familiar with your music, uh, if you want a very brief bio about um, kind of uh, maybe what led to making of of this particular record. Uh, I kind of dropped out for a while right before this one, went through kind of a rough patch, and uh, so this, this album ended up just being sort of my way of working through that, and uh, came out of the other side of it, a much better, happier, healthier person, so... <laughs> Excellent. Wonderful. And of course, uh, a lot of folks might know you from your work with the band, the Gear Daddies. And again, you've done a bunch of solo projects. And so this came out in 2012, Roosters Crows. And the first track uh, that you picked to feature today is called War Me Down. Is there anything you want to say about uh, this particular song before we dig into it? Play away. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. We'll let the music do the talking. This is Martin Zeller. Warm me down on the back catalog listening party. Well, let me up my head enough. I just can't take this. I need to slow my heartbeat down and unclench my fist a little by little and day by day. You're hammering me hard and you chipped away and you owe me. My heart, cause I let you break it. You didn't steal my joy, I let you take it. Do what you want with your own time, giving you enough of money, you owe me down. You owe me down. And I know life's not fair, it could be fair. Every 
let you I should have walked away Should have chose to forget you But little by little and day by day You hammered me hard and you chipped away And you walk me down You walk me down And I know life's not fair But it could be better if Martin Zeller here on the Back Catalog Listening Party from his 2012 release, of Rooster's Crows. That was Warm Me Down. Love the mandolin on that. Sounding that, really was sweet. Was that three mandolins there at the end? I was yeah, hearing it. Was it steer. That was big awesome. Big mandolin jam. Yeah. I love that. I, that, that was I, awesome. I told Alan this beforehand. This is like, I don't listen to my own stuff ever <laughs> when I get done recording it. So it's, it's actually... I hate listening. I hate listening to my stuff. Well, it's a good thing all these people out here listening um, love love listening. (laughs) And Um, yeah, well, uh, tell us a little bit about the band and and first of all, who's playing those three mandolins? uh, Well, I'll start out by saying it's like this was uh, recorded in Austin, Texas, at the time uh, at at Zone Studios in Austin, Texas. And at the time, my band was just myself and uh, Nick Seol on bass and Scott Winham on drums. So I knew we were going to need some extra players to fill out the recording. And I'm always looking for a reason to go to Austin, Texas. We lived there for five years. So I went down there and uh, scouted studios out and found one out in Dripping Springs right outside of town. And the engineers... Uh, who ended up producing too is a guy named Pat Mansky, who's the drummer. He's Joe Ely's drummer. He's the drummer for the Flatlanders. He's Alejandro Escadero's drummer. So he's really well connected in the Austin, Texas scene. So his little black book was, you know, full of great names. So he, uh, Scott and Nick hold down the fort for uh, the rhythm section throughout, through the whole album. And then I play acoustic but that uh, on mandolin there was uh billy bright and he plays on a couple other songs on the album but he played with he plays with uh peter rowan and he's just an unbelievable unbelievable player and he's playing a mandolin that was probably worth more than most people's houses (laughs) (laughs) like a lloyd lore (laughs) it it was crazy It it was an old gibson that was just amazing Wow, it's, that sounded that sounded great. What a what a treat that to be able to tap into that scene down there too. What a, it really I was. mean, it's a you know you don't hear you don't hear that kind of uh, those kind of you know mandolin chops on the average roots rock <laughs> <laughs> albums. Yeah, and I was I, I couldn't believe some of the, the the players he was able to get to come there. But and then uh, I'll quick say too that. Uh, Sort of the, a guitar player named Kevin McKinney, who's an Austin, Texas guy, played in a band called Soul Hat. Um, sort of became the unofficial fourth member for the making of Salem because he did a lot of the, or most of the heavy lifting on electric guitar parts and sat in on B3 on a couple songs. So Kevin McKinney was really essential to the making of Salem. Well, again, it it sounds fantastic. And I know you said you don't listen to your old records, and I think you're not alone. A lot of our guests have say exactly (laughs) the same thing. I'd say, and and I hate listening to my old records, but um, but I'm 
I don't know if 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 you're this way, Martin, but were you? S- and maybe you'll have to tell us at the end of the show today whether you're surprised by anything that you hear today. We'd be curious to know if there's anything that pops out that you think of when you listen to these songs now, um, uh, other than you know embarrassment that we all share <laughs> when we listen to our own music. Um, but again, that song wore me down. Uh, you were saying it was kind of coming out of a. Uh, you know, kind of a darker place in the making of this record kind of was bringing you back. Um, uh, you can kind of hear that the weariness in that song, but it's such an uplifting well, song. Just wait. Just, just wait till the, uh, that one's, you know, one of the peppy tracks. <laughs> that, one's about, that one is about, and, and imagine if I tried to write the same thing today, but that one's about 20, like at that point, that 24-hour news cycle and social media thing is just like absolutely breaking me. So imagine how bad it has been for the last however many years. It's just like, even at that point, just like the unrelenting uh, bad news and just unrelenting frustration, Mm -hmm. I just had to drop out from Mm -hmm. following the news. And I've I've had to do that a lot over the last few years too, but... Yeah, well, it, maybe maybe that's why this song and this album feel so resonant and good to listen to right now, because we all know the news has just been not so for a bunch of years. Um, <laughs> and uh, and obviously the pandemic and all this stuff going on in the world right now, I feel like, um, you know, there's nothing like listening to sad songs to lift mm-hmm. us all up. And um, at, this is coming from two two folks, uh, Anthony and I, who who love bluegrass and sad folk songs. So. <laughs> Very um, cathartic. Yes. <laughs> and uh, and honestly, it's kind of the only medicine that works for me these days. And so, you know, it's always appreciative. I know artists have such a, you know, they oftentimes have big antennas. And, and that, so it, it, things affect them a lot. And But what comes out in yeah. the end are songs like this. And, and I think we all appreciate hearing those. Yeah. And we're getting lots yeah. of... Lots of comments online from folks who are loving the music and loving seeing your face, Martin. And uh, although this album was made in Austin, Texas, uh, where you where you live for a while, uh, you're actually originally from Austin, Minnesota, <laughs> which is correct. Where you got your start, Born and, and yes, and uh, so from Austin to Austin, uh, this is sounding real, real good. And um, the next song we have um, queued up is "Took the Poison." Uh, is there anything you want to say, or you just want to dive in? Dive in. Well, I guess I'd rather. I, I want to listen to it again before <laughs> I, to refresh my memory here. So sounds good. <laughs> All right. This is Martin Zeller. Took the poison on the back catalog listening party. <laughs> took the poison. Took the fall Hit bottom now I'm trying to crawl Up from the mess I made Of my life I do it alone No one is to blame Did the damage I caused The pain And I own So tired of me So am I, baby Who wouldn't be Who wouldn't want To walk away from this now When I'm on my knees You never know How much I feel Waking up Without you here i 
much I feel Waking up without you here Without you All right. Martin Zeller here on the Back Catalog Listening Party with nice. Took the Poison from his 2012 release, Rooster's Crows, which we are revisiting today on the show. And folks really digging it. Also nice to see a few uh, Twin Cities musicians tuned in. Doug Collins, Terry Walsh from the Belfast Cowboys, who was on the show just a couple weeks ago. Okay. And and um, and we had um, a lot of folks loving the harmonies. Rob mentioned that, a few others. Um, and Mikkel actually had asked this question a little bit earlier, wondering about how did you get the incredible Kelly Willis for two songs on this record? We were able to write the rights of this for, for uh, uh, my, my time on, on, on the Why don't, hey Martin, why don't we, uh, we're going to try and maybe if you want to unplug your mic and plug it back in, we're going to see if we can get that yeah, right when you started. Yeah, a little bit of Mr. Roboto. Um, <laughs> well, that's not a bad thing, is it? No, it's not. It's not. Well, is it, is it working? It, we still have a little bit of that. Well, we, we will we'll chat a little bit because it's been going in and out, but it's been mainly pretty good during the broadcast, so. Um, we should mention, though, while Martin's working on that, yeah. that um, if you like what you hear, this is an album that you can buy. And uh, it's a great day to do it on Bandcamp because uh, Martin and all the artists on Bandcamp get 100% of the sales. So uh, it's a good way to oh, support. Hey. A good way to support. And your mic is back. So yes, you're. Right. Your yep. mic likes the fact. <laughs> yep. Basically, maybe it was the the universe telling us we had to mention your Bandcamp uh, page. Yep. Yep. So, yeah. um, so uh, continue talking about uh, Kelly Willis. You, you said that you asked, and she said yes. Yeah. Well, we were <laughs> uh, label mates on Ryko Disc uh, for my years on Ryko, and we, you know, did some uh, uh, Ryko showcase kind of stuff together. So. So I just called up. I was thrilled she was willing to do it and she was available. And uh, she's just a lovely person. Truly is one of my favorite voices, period. I mean, I just absolutely love her voice. So I'm very fond of the two songs, especially that she sang on. But I also had Terry Hendrix, and I don't think we're playing mm. anything uh, today. But Terry Hendricks came in and uh, sang backups too, and she's absolutely phenomenal. So yeah, and she's a great songwriter as well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, an amazing songwriter. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, and we'll make sure we throw some links in for both Kelly Willis and Terry Hendricks uh, later in there, so uh, folks can check out their music because again, some really great talent featured on this record. Speaking of voices, though, one of my favorite instrumental voices is the pedal steel guitar. Um, and I feel like on, on a couple of the tracks that I was listening to prepping for this, like it's just another voice in the chorus. It's so beautiful and it really talks like a, almost like a human. Who's, who's behind the pedal steel on this? Wow, wow, that's that. Lloyd Oh, wow. Arnie, 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 If you, if you didn't hear him, it, it was Lloyd Maines is what Lloyd he said. Mains, We're still yeah. getting a little bit of that um, um, that feedback. But, man, it's so gorgeous, <laughs> and it and it adds such wonderful textures to this to this music. Yeah, yeah. Is it coming through now? Or am I still? It's still a little, little robotic. <laughs> oh, shoot. Um, and you know what? You guys can still throw in your questions. We also have a way of communicating with, with Martin, too. So we can always pass stuff on. If if, yes. uh, if if you guys have questions, we can also patch them through to Martin so we can still answer the questions. Yeah. Uh, so throw them in the comments. It's uh, no worries. And we appreciate. Yeah, oh, no, it's working now. Yeah, oh, OK. <laughs> quick. So, really OK. Quick, then I want to repeat while I have those that Lloyd Maines uh, came in and played uh, Pedal Steel and Dobro on, I think, one of the songs we're going to play. And he it's like a. Uh, I played with some pretty incredible players in my career, but it was the it's the only time that I've ever been like in the company of 
a true, true virtuoso, somebody that like sits at the very top of the, you know, of their instrument. And he came in and, you know, he's, I was thrilled that he was even willing to come in. And every take he gave on this album, I would have accepted the first take <laughs> gladly, gladly. Yeah. And, and he was getting paid by the song, you know, so it's like he had a vested, he could have been in and out of there in 15 minutes and I would have been thrilled. But he sat and played them. He didn't care what I wanted. He, he played them until he was happy with them. Wow. Which is the sign of a real, real pro. It's like, it, it was just like, no, I'm going to. So he, was, he sat there for hours and just said, I can do it better. I want to try this. I want to try that. And again, I was more than happy to accept the first take on everything he did. But he was such a, a great guy. And yeah, he, he plays a lot of Terry Jenkins. They, they're kind of a uh, partner duo. And they've been doing a lot of live streams from uh, Terry's farm. And they're just, just fantastic. So live from Willery Farms, they're called. Yeah, and for those of you who might have missed just that last bit, and now Martin, you're you're, uh, we'll just repeat things if it ever goes a little funky. Um, but basically, he was just saying that Lloyd Maines, in addition to um, being just such an A-list player, that he also plays with Terry Hendricks, and they've been doing some great live streams, so you can check those out online as well. And uh, yeah, Lloyd Maines, I mean, oh man, one of the best. I, I, yeah, I didn't have the liner notes in front of me, but I I just kept stopping it and like listening again and being like, holy moly, he's he's like a, a you know. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it just, and it, it's suits your, mm-hmm. and it suits your music so well. And, and mm-hmm. I want to say that like the gear daddies, like when I was, when I was growing up, I grew up not too far from uh, grand Avenue in St. Paul. And, uh, if I remember right, there was usually a Martin Zeller performance <laughs> during grand old days, um, some form of it. And I want to say it might've been the first time I heard this, this kind of, I don't know, combination of, of like roots, rock music and, and country and, and folk it was all very, very new to me. And just one question I, I just personally wanted to ask was kind of what, what kind of stuff were you listening to growing up that, that kind of created the sound? Because really, I felt like your band and, and what you do now still, you were kind of on the cutting edge of, of, of something that now is, you know, everybody loves the pedal steel and the dobro. Well, maybe <laughs> maybe I'm a little biased, but, um, you know, like it's, it's, it's part of our vernacular now. But it wasn't, you know, in the late 80s and early 90s that I remember, in the, at least in popular culture. So I'm just curious, like, where did, where did that come from for you? Who were you listening to growing up that, that gave you this? Well, alt country wasn't around when, <laughs> you know, it wasn't a format. <laughs> I think I, I think I was or we were the sort of uh, product of two radio stations, hmm. a classic country radio station in Austin, in Austin, Minnesota, and then a classic rock station. <laughs> and it's like, so those are the two stations that were on anywhere you went. One of those was on. <laughs> but, you know, the first 45 I bought was Folsom Prison Blues right. beside a boy named Sue. So I've been... And actually, you know, as Bluegrass fans, the first, one of the first albums, maybe the third album I ever bought was Flat and Scruggs, an album called Town and Country. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Where they did all songs, just city name songs, and fell in love with that. Um, so, I mean, a reviewer once wrote that the Gear Dads were like the bastard sons of Hank Williams and the replacements. But... <laughs> I would say it's closer to the Baptist Sons with Hank Williams and Sticks, you know, like, because those are those are the bands you know like that were coming in one ear or the other growing up. Very cool. Thanks for sharing that. I I, I kind of felt like yeah, you guys were helped to find that alt country moniker. You know, there wasn't anything like that. I didn't know what to call it other than I, I wish we had come along a little bit later. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it, it meant a lot to a lot of us. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, really great stuff. And uh, if you just tuned into the Back Catalog Listening Party, again, we have Martin Zeller joining us today, talking about his 2012 release, Rooster's Crows, recorded in Austin, Texas. But he was just talking about growing up in Austin, Minnesota, about uh, being a um, hybrid of country and classic rock. And um, But yeah, this album is has been really doing it for me this week. And if it has for you all too, uh, you can, uh, again, throw comments, questions in the comments, and uh, we'll try and answer all the questions. And um, 
Yeah, I love this comment from Alyssa, by the way. Leave it to the guys from Austin, Minnesota to combine a little of this, and that, and another thing. The musical Spam. Oh, God bless it. Yes. Uh, so thank you for that. And again, if you like the album, you can buy it on Bandcamp today. Um, all artists get 100% of the sales there. So it's a great way to support Martin and your favorite artists today. Um, you can also buy my whole catalog for under twenty bucks. I've got one. Uh, I've got it set up that you can buy every album. Whoa! I that's, saw that on there. Digitally. That's amazing. I think everybody listening hey, right now should do that. Just do that. <laughs> I'm telling you, if you can, the idea of being able to make anything off of recorded <laughs> music is kind of a miracle. So I'm thrilled. Yeah, yeah I, I saw that on Bandcamp. So we got a link in the comments. If you're listening, enjoying this, and you want the whole catalog, man, you can't go wrong. $20, I mean, that's such a bargain. <laughs> and I don't know how many albums that is, Martin, but it's got to be a lot. Six or seven, I don't know. Six or seven, one of them's a double CD, but... Okay. Uh, so that's a, that's, know. you heard it here, folks, uh, here on the Back Catalog Listening Party. All of Martin Zeller's albums for $20 on Bandcamp that today. I own. Yeah, yeah so not, get, right. not, he'll the, get, not the gear daddies. Uh, yeah, and he'll get right. every cent if you buy it today. So yes. right. go out and do it right now. That's right. Yes. And um, and we're gonna continue with the music because we want to make sure folks get a chance to to listen to more of these songs because uh, it's so much fun to talk with you about them and what went into the recording of them. This next song you picked from the album is called Seven Shades of Blue. Uh, is there anything you want to say about it before we dive in? Pretty straightforward country song, love song for my wife. Uh, and Lloyd Maines on pedal steel guitar. The listen, king. You got to listen to that, to him <laughs> sing on this one. Holy moly. This is Seven Shades of Blue, Martin Zeller on the back catalog listening party. Little, little mornings, turn to 12 back afternoon. I know a train is coming, yeah, I know it's coming soon And I'm not sure if I'm searching for or if I'm running from But I do know that I'm all alone, you call my name, I'll come I'll come to you and make you see My poor heart, it aches for you And it weighs me down with all the baggage being the stupid things But I don't want to be like this, it isn't who I am I know if I could be with you I'd be a better man, a better man Just for you No one could love you like I do You might be lonely And you know I'm lonely too Could be lonely together Share the silence, me and you If I could just be next to you Lay there quietly And listen to your heartbeat Girl, that'd be enough for me Enough for me To be with you No one could love you like I do Oh, wow. Martin Zeller here on the Back Catalog Listening Party with Seven Shades of Blue from his 2012 release. And um, Doug Collins says, damn, that's steel. And that's, wow. 
<laughs> that, yeah, it's like a call and response kind of thing. Going yeah, on. and he does that really cool organ thing that you can't even tell it's a steel. He like lays down this really low swelling thing underneath everything. It's, it's, I had never heard how this feels when you do it. It's just sort of like, like yeah. I never heard it. Yeah, for, for those of you who might not have gotten that 100%, basically he was saying, uh, Martin was saying that he kind of lays down a layer and then sort of plays over it, sort of has an organ feel to it. And uh, I agree. I think it sounds amazing. And, uh, you know, uh, Jim Walsh had a question that I thought was um, really uh, was something I was wondering the same thing. Uh, you were talking about how this record came out of a dark time. How do you feel when you listen to these songs now? Do you... Do they feel resonant now, or does it just bring you back to that time? Well, we haven't listened to anything that's like troubled me so far, but some of the couple of the tracks are darker than others. Um, I could, I'm actually having a pretty good time listening to it because I can <laughs> listen to these great players like mm -hmm. all day long. So, it, and and I had a great time recording it. So you know, it's bringing back. Uh, some great memories of that but nice. yeah you know i don't know <laughs> well it's I, I, don't, I listening to my voice is not something i love doing i know it's not funny but yeah i i, I think you're right like when uh, certainly that's been my experience i've listened to old old records or, or my voice, I, I don't love that, but I love hearing, bringing back the memories for me and then hearing what other people have contributed, which I think is so special, especially on this record with this A-list cast of players. And uh, someone, Paul just said, found this record used at the fetus a while back and love it. So uh, uh, folks are loving revisiting Thanks, this material. And then Dan asked, any new material in the works? Has this been a good time for writing for you um, without the gigging or have, have you... Um, some artists, it feels like it's feast or famine for a lot of artists. Either they're being very prolific or they're not writing at all. More famine than feast in my case. Mm -hmm. um, I need I need stuff coming in, you know. It's mm -hmm. like I need to have some stimulus and it's been kind of... I better probably turn my... Uh, so, I don't know, but I have... But I actually, I just recently kind of came through. I've got a really nice little studio down here in my house that I'm finally learning how to use thanks to my son. <laughs> uh, so my drummer is coming down uh, soon. He's coming down to Mexico. He's uh, going to quarantine for a while and then he's going to uh, come over and we're going to work on stuff since nice. drums and percussion are the one thing that I cannot, can't do. So, nice. um, yeah, so, uh, yes, I am working on stuff. I could have just said that. <laughs> no, it's great to hear. I think you just made a lot of people happy uh, <laughs> saying that. Yeah, and of course, uh, a lot of folks certainly uh, in Minnesota way would love to see you come back here, but we realize that that might be a little while. But a lot of folks were saying how much they've been enjoying your live streams, and one person in particular mentioned your Christmas show. Um, how, how has your experience been doing the, the live stream thing? I know it's a totally different beast than playing for a big packed house of people it's better than nothing mm -hmm. you know <laughs> and now i've been doing a lot of private zoom shows mm -hmm. which have been are even a little bit better because they're at least interactive i mm -hmm. can see them on the screen they can see me we can have a you know a conversation real time mm -hmm. and that makes a huge difference but uh i'm really looking forward i miss my bandmates Oh, this my friends. I like. I don't uh, think people realize it's like when we, you know, didn't just lose my way of making a living. I lost, you know, one of the things that brought me joy since I've been 15. I've been making music since I was 15, you know, professionally, and and my best friends are also my bandmates. So I've lost all of this at the same time. And I'm not. I know everyone. It's not. It's been hard for everyone, but. Just from a personal perspective, it's been really hard. But yeah, I mean, they've been better than nothing. Uh, yeah. And but I'm so looking forward to actually be able to see people again. Yeah. I yeah. hear that. And uh, Daniel says better than playing the Monterey Ballroom. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> which. That's which. No. Which. Yeah. See. Yeah. No. Playing the Monterey. I mean, I just 
not better than playing on the street corner if <laughs> they're with you. you right, know? right. Well, um, uh, someone said the Gear Daddy's live stream is one of my uh, favorite memories of the pandemic. So uh, folks, uh, <laughs> folks are loving seeing you in whatever capacity they can. And we're certainly happy that you're here with us today, revisiting this record from 2012. And um, we're going to dig into another song. And this uh, is called uh, Give and Take, All the Love You Can. Is there anything you want to say before we listen to it together? Okay. Okay. I'm going to cut you off just because it's feeding back. So, but I did hear Lloyd Main in there. Uh, so listen up for that. And then when we come back, uh, we'll chat more about that. Oh, see, you're you're coming. You that came through, Martin. So you want to repeat that? We got here real quick. Okay, I just said this is this do this is Lloyd on the Dobro, and this is one where we were in the I was in the control room as he played in the live room, and everyone's jaws just sort of hit the floor on this solo. All right, well, let's give it a listen. This is Martin Zeller. Give and take all the love that you can on the back catalog listening party. <laughs> Live and let, live and let sleeping dogs laugh Laugh when you can, let it out when you cry Don't buy into heaven nor hell Be good, try to live your life well Some things just happen, some choices you make Some pairs you choose, others you're forced to take Life comes at you day after day Use your head, let your heart be the way With what you are given, do all you can do Hold all the pain you can stand Live every moment to your life to give and take all the love that you can well, Things come together and things fall apart Life's so much more than the beat of your heart so much after to do And all of it's waiting on you Martin Zeller and of course Lloyd Maines on that dobro sounding so good. Yeah, I agree, and, Kathy. And that um, that percussion on mm -hmm. that, I mean, it almost evoked like a Celtic. That's kind of exactly what I was going to say. Boron or something. How, what a what a great idea. That's what like, it is. Oh, it is. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> there you go. So, I mean, it, it, I didn't. Can you hear me, by the way? It's feeding back a little bit. Um, I will say. Um, if we give it a minute, it, we've noticed it's just been settling down after a minute. So uh, one thing I, w I will also say that I want to ask you about is the accordion on that, because, again, it lent to that sort of Celtic vibe on the record. Um, but I did want to point out that both Jim and Tom were talking about the goosebumps happening. Uh, uh, Tom in Florida, Jim here in Minneapolis. And, uh, yeah, I was definitely feeling that way. And 
I also want to point out this this lovely comment from Paul. Martin is way too humble. Love this album. He's so talented and his sense of humor is amazing. First concert was at Concordia College in early 1990s. So folks are loving to see you, and this is such a treat. And if you like what you're hearing here on the Back Catalog Listening Party, uh, you can buy the record. In fact, you can buy Martin's whole catalog, um, all of his uh, solo stuff for 20 bucks. Uh, so it's a deal today. And, um, and yeah. okay, I th let's give it a go, Martin. Uh <laughs> <laughs> give it a try. <laughs> uh -oh. Working? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Yeah. All right, Talk. So yeah, quick. <laughs> on accordion, there's Terry Allen's on accordion. Mm. You play keyboard. Who's the, I mean, Terry Allen, I'm sorry, Bucca. Terry's mm -hmm. son. The great Terry Allen's son, the great Bucca Allen. Mm -hmm. But uh, he's played with a lot of folks. Um, he played some keyboards and he played some, and he played accordion on the album. Mm. Sounds so good. But yeah, tell us about that Celtic feel that you were going for. Well, it wasn't. You know, when I wrote it, I didn't. It didn't feel like a. I didn't feel the Irish vibe. But the more we started recording, it started to come in, and all of a sudden, Pat, the engineer, just happened to have whatever it's called that. Uh, the boron. The boron, yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah, I happened to have one in the closet, so I pulled it out, and Scott, uh, my drummer, added that at that one section. It. Yeah, it's funny. I didn't think about it um, until I, I heard it. But it, you know, even the the melody has this kind of almost Irish folk um, lilt to it, and mm -hmm. uh, I just thought that was perfect. What a, a testament to great production, right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, that song is basically just I was trying to scribble off every bit of advice <laughs> that I could give to my children should I be struck by lightning, you know, in the next hour. It's like. So that's just, that's my, that's my, you know, strung together advice for my children. Well, I would love it if I got advice like that uh, in that <laughs> musical format. Um, I don't know if that if if I don't know if you're. I mean, I know your kids are a little older now, but I I don't know when they were younger. Did they like going to see you play or go to shows, or were they kind of like, oh, that's Dad's weird thing he does. <laughs> More that, <laughs> more the latter. Uh, uh, but uh, my oldest son, especially, was really, you know, taken by instruments and PA's, and he's gone on to be a an amazing musician himself and great engineer. But uh, you know, in the end, I'm their dad, and they could they didn't really <laughs> care too much about the music part. <laughs> So this is what we have to look forward to, Tony. Well, uh, we both have, we all have with, little kids. <laughs> it already started with me. My kids would come to our sh my shows and be like, yay. And now they're just like, turn that banjo music off. <laughs> <laughs> my, uh, my oldest daughter now, she only listens to EDM. And uh, I think it's out of, of spite for the banjo. I don't know. Uh, well, uh, Brent had a, had a question. Uh, not one of the songs we're listening to today, but had, just had a question. What is the backstory to Some Girls, one of my favorite all-time songs? Well, there's not... That's one of the rare times that I've actually written a song more as an exercise in songwriting. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I had actually, I wrote it to pitch to a female artist and um, we we're looking for something uh, slower. We we're looking for something in that, in that vein for the album. So I said, well, I've got this one, but I wrote it for someone else. So I just quick, tweaked some of the lyrics. So yeah, that one's just basically me sitting down trying to write a, a little pop love song for someone else. Wonderful. Um, and uh, so yeah, tell us a little bit if, if we if we can squeeze it in um, is do you find that are most of your songs then songs that are really inspired by by real life experiences or people you know, rather than um, sort of, as you said, just an exercise in songwriting? Almost all, and this one especially is autobiographic, but a lot of a lot of other stuff, it's just like I would say, like the thing about being a songwriter, at least for me, is a lot of my songs have been told to me, <laughs> you know? I just like, I'll be at a bar, I'll be someplace, and somebody says something, could be one line or a whole story, and all of a sudden I'm just like, that's a song. <laughs> and so songs get told to you if you listen, you know? Yeah. Yeah, people have, I've heard a lot of songwriters say that, e, that the best songwriters are really just eavesdroppers. Um, 
There's a lot to that. There's a lot to that. Um, and uh, that's really yeah, good advice. It is. It is. And I can also see then why you say that uh, writing has been harder now because you aren't out on the road. You're not hearing. You're not coming in contact with as many people as you would when you're touring or out and about. Right. And I, I've been. You know. I think a lot of us have been so miserable that no one wants to hear, you know, what we're feeling right now. Or, or they don't want your like everyday log from your house again. You know, like right. it's laundry day again. Well, has has living in Mexico kind of changed? You know, like the the way that you write or the things that you write about. Are there cultural experiences that have have affected that at all? Um. Well, it, it, not exactly. It puts things into perspective a lot more, you know. It's a lot harder to feel sorry for yourself when you live here and you see what, you know, real problems look like, what real poverty looks like. What, But that being said, you know, the Mexican people rate, like, I think seven or high, seven more steps higher on the UN's happiness index than Americans. So it's like... They don't have a whole lot, but they're really happy. Mm -hmm. And I'll say that like it's it's such a vibrant culture. You're constantly bombarded with mu this, this music. If I opened the windows, you'd hear ranchero music drifting in from the neighbors. You'd hear roosters and burros, and it's just all color and sound and smells. It's just so much uh, stimulus coming at you all the time. So that makes a difference. Yeah. Uh, well, if you, uh, again, just joined us, we are talking with Martin Zeller on the Back Catalog Listening Party. And, um, and uh, oh, so, someone correct me. I said Rooster's Crows earlier. I apologize. Rooster's Crow. And you were just mentioning um, uh, Rooster's. Uh, tell us a little bit about the title for this album. Up, uh, up. Uh, Okay, we're going to dig into this next song. Since, <laughs> we can just uh, enjoy that nice um, album art here. Exactly. Um, so Rooster's Crow, and my apologies for, for my misspeaking earlier. A lot of folks were on me, so sorry about that. Um, and I'm Rooster's Crow, <laughs> I know, it's good. It's good. Um, yes, it is. Uh, it's good to admit your mistakes. So Rooster's Crow, we are going to hear uh, this uh, final song from the record, Running on Pure Fear. And uh, we're going to take a listen and more with Martin after this. All right. Well, I'm a long way from Still I'm better than before Clear the lightning from my head And I crawled up off the floor I got rid of all the guns And I flushed down all the Finally made my way to bed I got the shakes, I got the chills And I ain't thankful for No, I ain't thinking for I'm running on pure fear I just can't get no traction And I'm avoiding all the men And all I'm hearing now is static Just all the hell that I can hear
Martin Zeller uh, from his album Rooster's Crow uh, that came out in 2012 that <laughs> was run, running on Pure Fear. And uh, man, uh, folks, yeah, folks loving the song. Also, Kelly's vocals on that really top notch. Yeah, yeah. Yes. This, this is this one, yeah, killer. <laughs> and uh, hopefully, my voice, like, am I coming through? Mm -hmm. Yep. So my favorite, maybe my favorite thing on this album is that solo, which was like that guitar solo, which when it happened, we called it the slingshot because uh, it's like Kevin McKinney does it, hits it, and then he pulls back, and there's like this pause, and then the whole solo just goes whoosh. It just like hurdles out there like a slingshot. And I just, it was just, I think it's a brilliant solo. And I think that might be one of my favorite parts. That's, that's a hard song for me to listen to. That's one of the, one of the songs that's like, I probably would never listen to again, but uh, yeah, I love that solo. Yeah, yeah. That was amazing tone too. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there and it it seemed to just like mimic the the lyric. I mean, like it it, it captured the lyrics and it captured the the melody. I mean, like it just was part of the texture of that song. It's, it's perfect. Yeah, yeah. Well, this has been such a blast uh, to first of all to see your face, Martin. It's been a long time since we've seen each other in person, um, and so it's it's great to see you. Great to chat with you about this record, and for being game to do this. I know when I reached out to you again, you were hesitant because you're like, I don't listen like listening to my old songs, and you've been such a, a mensch to join us and and be a part of this today. And folks are loving hearing this record. And Scott just said, just a great sounding record. Um, love it and um i i couldn't agree more this has been a lovely hour of music and uh, uh folks thanks if you for giving me a reason to to shave and shower <laughs> put on a clean shirt although i am wearing uh socks. mismatch mismatching socks <laughs> with a with a I hole love in it. the bottom so I That's why the it. cameras only go so far <laughs> yeah. exactly folks, right? exactly i can't claim my socks match either so uh well, I just I just want to say something that um, Martin, you mentioned you did these private Zoom concerts, and I can't imagine a better way to get through uh, uh, the rest of the winter than having a private concert from you. Is that something they can uh, do right through your website? I believe so. I or, hope so uh, because I, I just put it on the screen here. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you you or can you, figure out how to contact him that way. Yeah, you you can go through booking at, uh, on my website if it's there's not the exact house or zoom concert if it's not there yet you can just go to booking and get a hold of my booking agent wonderful and so you too can enjoy uh, martin in your home uh maybe mismatched socks maybe he'll put on matching socks for you i don't know um, <laughs> we, don't, we don't ask what's uh, below the shirt That's, no we uh, don't <laughs> Well, um, again, if you were new to the Back Catalog Listening Party today, thank you for joining us. We do this actually every week, uh, fr every Friday at 4 p.m. Central. Tony and I welcome different guest musicians on to talk about old records and answer your questions. And if you like what you heard, um, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel and know about future events. And yeah, give it a little thumbs up. They, and give this video a thumbs up. It's going to push Martin into more people's ears. Uh, if you do that that's right and also this will be up on youtube so you can share it with your friends as well so um again thank you all for joining us and um we want to thank all our patreon supporters these are the folks that keep the show going from week to week with their support penny and alinda bevan connie vaughn alan chris alex becky galen peggy joe jim beverly john fred and tim and maybe you if you want to support it and get in on special after parties um, private online concerts and such and uh, that's how you can do that yeah, and thank you all so much for, for being here and for being so vocal. Clearly, there's a lot of people that miss seeing you play, Martin, mm -hmm. and uh, we, we, so appreciate, we so appreciate your time here today and sharing. I know you don't like listening to the music together, but we, we loved it. This, was, oh, this so is so what we all straight. needed today. Thank yeah. you very much for having me. And uh, we'll see you all next week. Have a great week. Enjoy some music. Buy some music on Bandcamp today. And we'll yep. see you back for another edition of the Back Catalog Listening Party next Friday. Cheers, Cheers. everybody. Bye-bye.